Internet, meet the humanities. Humanities, the internet. I'm sorry to put you two on a blind date, but I have a feeling you're really gonna like each other. Picture this, it's the end of a long week. You've been grinding it out at work, moving mountains in your personal life, and you know that come Friday night, you're finally gonna do a little something for yourself. Only this time, it's gonna be different. No more mindless sitcoms, no more endlessly scrolling the gram, wishing you were somewhere else. It's time for something fulfilling. Time to get called back to your higher self. It's time to kick your feet up and give yourself a little bit of that enrichment you've been hankering for. It's time to mix some cocoa or pour a glass of wine or both and dig deep into that honker of a George Eliot novel you've been meaning to read. To delve a little more profoundly, shall we say, into the life of Charlotte Bronte. She was one of your favorites at college after all. Or to finally check on the screenwriting work of Dorothy Parker or heck, the lesser known works of Geoffrey Chaucer. The world is your oyster. But where to go? How to make it happen and not just give up after the first page when that week-long exhaustion finally sets in? Wouldn't it be nice if there were a place to go for exactly that experience? A nerdy Netflix where you could immerse yourself in the world of literature, books galore, and read to your heart's content, but where you could not only read, but listen lectures, audiobooks, podcast conversations, and not only listen, but watch. Mark up these books with your most elaborate, personal, intellectually minded digital scrawling and share what you found with the world. Well, that dawn is finally breaking. Think about it. A hundred years ago, people would spend their nights reading aloud to family or friends or even to themselves, maybe playing some music or socializing a little, but more often than not, it was time for reflection and introspection. A time for putting aside the trappings of the day and settling in with something beautiful, wise, and true. That's what great storytelling has always been about, after all. Calling us back to our higher selves, to the greater story of our lives. So, welcome to Time Zero. Time Zero is a new way to explore media, a new way to discover books and encounter great storytelling and conversation. We always knew technology would get around to providing us a new way of learning the story of stories, so at Time Zero, that's just what we've set out to build. At Time Zero, you can enjoy an incredible literary experience supported by lectures, animations, podcast conversations, and audiobooks that allow you to listen and read at the same time all in one place, all mapped over a gorgeous interactive landscape for that one thing we're all missing from modern life, context. While understanding chronological context and the historical, political, and literary movements that buttress a given work is hugely important, at Time Zero, we also care about the thematic and poetic content and have designed our world to present these concepts in a way that's revolutionary on the one hand and second nature on the other, through a landscape. My name is Alan Guy Wilcox, and just like you, I've always wanted to have the reading life of my dreams. When I got out of college, I asked myself a simple question. Okay, so what do I know? I yearn to be responsible for a body of knowledge and to find a way to keep expanding that knowledge and including works from outside my normal field of vision. That was the genesis of Time Zero. Now, we need your help. With funding, we'll be able to finish the technical build of this crazy interactive repository for human storytelling and wisdom and expand that offering to include language traditions from around the world. We want to extend literary education to more people while expanding and diversifying what you might think of as your grandpa's literary canon. And we're not stopping at the world's great literatures either. At Time Zero, we're going to bring to life the world's great oral traditions as well, built with a scholarly architecture you can trust and a sense of humor and beauty that we think helps to honor all the great books and stories we all love so dearly. We're at a critical point now. 
It's time to decide whether we want to bring a culture of deep reading forward into the 21st century, to celebrate the cultural richness of yesterday and today, or to let that languish, fall by the wayside, and be subsumed into a culture of quick likes and quicker hates, of instant gratification and endless distraction. Join us on this adventure. Help Times Arrow bring to life a world of imaginative literature for our generation and for those who will come after us. Thank you. One that April with his sure sota, the drocht of March hath passed to the rota, and bathed every vein in switchly cour, of which vertu engendered is the flour. One Zephyrus ache with his sweaty breath, in speeded hath in every holt that hath the thunder of croppers, and the younger son that hath in the ram his half horse runner. Then, oh, f and smaller fowls making melody, they sleep in all the nicht with open ear. So pricketh them nature in hip courages, then long and folk to go on, on pilgrimages, and palmeres for to second stranger stranders, to fern howers, coth and sondre londers. Especially from every shearer's end of England to Canterbury they wend, uh, the holy blissful martyr for the sake uh, that him hath holpen, one that they were sake.